And I, as I said, I'm proud to stand here um, one year after being here for my first board meeting. Uh, I'm proud to stand before you as superintendent of Jefferson County Public Schools as I present really our first ever state of the district address. Uh, this address is a required component of my first year superintendent program uh, that I took part in uh, throughout uh, the state this year. I would like to welcome Dr. Fred Carter and Dr. Blake Hazelton, uh, who have joined me tonight. So if we could give them a welcome, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> so these two gentlemen, both uh, very successful superintendents um, in our state, um, not only provided uh, what they had to do to coach and mentor me through my first year, um, and with many of new superintendents throughout the state, I believe there was about 25 this year ballpark and I think there's as we talked I think there's already going to be 30 next year um, so I'm not sure uh, these are long-lived uh, jobs uh, but I'm excited to have them here they not only perform their task of getting me through this first year superintendency but more important provided me guidance um, and mentorship and coaching along the way so I greatly appreciate their guidance and also um, uh, Board Member Brady, who was a part of the committee um, uh, as well. And so this has been an excellent program. Um, uh, Dr. Carter called me a year ago as acting superintendent and said it was my choice. I could participate in the program this year. Um, and if I got the job, I would be able to um, uh, continue on and be successful, or I could wait till next year. And I asked him, would this be beneficial to me going through this process to be coached and mentored? And he said, yes, it would. It would be very beneficial. And I'm so glad I said yes at that time. And um, it took several days away from the district, uh, but it was so beneficial through my first year and so valuable. So I'm very glad um, that I said yes. And most importantly, um, I'd also like to highlight the collaboration that I developed with other new superintendents throughout this state. Um, so there were 24 others that I had the opportunity to collaborate and talk with. And when I got there, so many of them said, you know, my problems have to be so different than your problems. And what I found as we went through this, that many of our challenges and problems may be very different districts, but our challenges are the same. Um, and so great opportunity for me to collaborate with superintendents throughout this state to bridge the gap that I think has existed in this district all too often, which is we put a wall around um, our county and our school district and not collaborated with other districts throughout this state. So a goal of mine throughout this and throughout this program was to make new friends that are superintendents, have people to reach out and talk to, which I did, collaborate with them, and also make a, a goal of mine in this district that we will collaborate with other districts throughout this state. Um, and so um, we're bridging that gap and we're changing um, that thinking here in Jefferson County because there is a lot we can learn from every district in this state and we can provide some insight to them too. So thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of this. Um, so as I said, this state of the district uh, address is a part of this capstone presentation. And really what was posted online was the seven standards for superintendent evaluation that you have copies of and you will be able to use a lot of that information um, and more that I have collected throughout the course of the year to provide me with my evaluation. Um, but instead of focusing on the standards, I wanted to do more of a state of the district address. I've covered a lot of these things in my superintendent reports in recent months, so some of it will be recapping some of the things I said. Um, but I really want to talk about this and I also was telling Dr. Carter and Dr. Hazelton that we want to make this an ongoing part of JCPS's calendar each and every year, where the superintendent should stand up and give a state of the district address and talk about where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going in the coming year. And so that's what I'd like to talk about tonight. Those are the three areas that I will focus on, where we've been, the challenges that we face this year. Um, as everyone knows, there's been numerous amounts of those. Where we currently are as a district, as we sit right now, and most importantly, where we want to be in the near future um, and what we want our district to look like when I stand back up here a year from now um, and give a similar address. Um, so first of all, where we've been. Um, clearly, everyone would know this has been a very challenging year for us as a district. The amount of challenges that we've gone through professionally, 
it's been one of the most difficult years that I have had um, just in the amount of challenges that we faced on a daily basis. Um, at the same time, without a doubt, it has been one of the most rewarding of my professional life. Um, the people in this district have given me inspiration each and every day, and it has been something special. Each and every time I would get down and think about, in all honesty, why am I doing this? Uh, there are easier jobs to do. Um, somebody would say something to me. Somebody would tell me something. Someone would say things are better. Someone would say a child uh, or a school is doing better because of the work that you all are doing. Um, it, and it um, inevitably happened each and every time. Um, and I can't tell you how much that has meant to me and pushed me through many of the challenges that we have faced. And so I have to thank all those people who have stopped me. Um, I've said many times, I've had so many people say they're praying for me. Um, I definitely have to be the most prayed for person in Jefferson County. And I, want, I keep telling all of them, please continue those prayers because I need them, we need them. Um, but that type of um, encouragement has been so important to me. And one of the reasons why I've, I've tried to be in school so often um, is to talk to teachers and students and parents and staff members and principals. And that's the type of feedback that is so important that we can't lose touch with that is, has just been an important part for me. Um, I believe we've had more challenges in the past year um, than any other school district, large school district in the United States. But I am proud to say personally and individually that I've taken on each of these challenges, still showed up to work each and every day, no matter how much I laid in bed, awake at night. Um, and I came back each and every day with just as much passion as the day before, and I'll continue to do that. Um, but without a doubt, it would be tough for any person to do this work or group to do this work if we didn't love this district and have passion for this district. And I think that's what we all have in common here that has kept us going through this. So a few thanks I want to give out. I want to thank everyone on this team, this JCPS team that has worked as feverishly as I have um, and really um, embraced every single change. There have been a lot of changes this year and doing things differently from the first day all the way through today, and there will be more tomorrow, and this team has embraced it. I want to thank you all, uh, the six of you here, and, and Ben also, but um, for trusting in me and partnering with me in this work and being just as committed as we have been to riding the ship. And so that's why I often talk about the team that we have and how important that is. And, and once again, I can't thank enough the thousands of JCPS employees and stakeholders who have given me the support and encouragement throughout the year. Um, it's really helped us power through a lot of the hardships and will continue to do that because we have such a passion for this district. And so as we get into where we were a year ago, um, I knew from the very beginning, very beginning, I knew we have a team of great people here, and I mean all of our stakeholders. Uh, they're dedicated to this district and truly care about the success of this district. I knew that, um, and uh, the group of employees is the foundation that we have, um, and it's so important to have that. The teachers, um, the classified employees, the administrators, people care about the kids in this district. Um, and I knew that right off the bat, and when I visited schools, people don't often, I've said this before, don't get to see what I get to see. We have great schools and great people in our schools. We've got a lot of work to do, there's no doubt, but that is the foundation that is gonna move us forward. Throughout this year, everyone knows we've been through a 15-month audit process by the KDE. It has been challenging for this district and staff throughout that time, really more about the unknown. Um, and so facing that challenge has been important. Also, a superintendent search process um, and really being in the role of acting superintendent and applying for the job for a large portion of the year uh, was challenging for staff, uh, but we came in every single day and said our job is to, no matter what, uh, to come in and work on the improvement of this district each and every day with the hopes that I would continue on in this role, which I did, but it provided that extra challenge. Um, without a doubt, in the past year, early in the year, we had an overall JCPS family that was struggling with morale. I felt we had a lack of systems throughout JCPS, a system-wide approach to everything. I've said from the very beginning that we need to be a school district and not a district of schools. And all too often, we have been a district of schools. So we have been working hard on systems um, throughout um, our district 
and especially systems around instruction and providing support for each and every kid. And a lot of that has led to unacceptable achievement gaps. And we have to admit that and we have to stand up and say that. We said that in our racial equity policy that we have achievement gaps in this district that are unacceptable. We have to move our proficiency scores up, especially in reading and math for all students, but we also have to reduce and eliminate that achievement gap, and that work has to be done. As everybody knows, we start throughout the year with a lack of compliance in many areas that led to state audit from the KDE and the OEA investigation that really required us to have schools change how they do things in the middle of the year. Uh, that was a huge challenge for us. Uh, I think well-documented, a crumbling infrastructure with too few new schools in the past two decades, and really our operations team having to try to just band-aid serious um, problems uh, with our facilities. I said before we had no coherent way to identify struggling students and ensure they're ready for transition. And so we were really hoping in many times that schools were doing that in a systemic way, but we weren't doing that. And so I've said often that hope is not a strategy. Um, we have to have a more effective strategy. I think we had a lack of coherence in central office staff and structure and how we provide oversight for schools and support for schools. And without a doubt, a lack of an assertive approach to reporting and addressing staff allegations around abuse and neglect. Um, and this came to fruition in the Head Start report that we had early in the year and provided a large challenge for us um, in training all of our staff members and making sure that in every single school we were reporting allegations and that we were uh, dealing with those situations very assertively um, when it came to discipline. And that required a big change in how we were doing things. Um, and so you can imagine all of these challenges along with the day-to-day -day challenges that occur from what happens in schools provided for a challenging year overall. Um, but once again, as I get into where we are, I can't say how proud I am. We are not there yet, without a doubt, but I'm proud of the work that we've done in the face of all those challenges. And so as well documented where we are right now, we know it's one of the most, if not the most challenging time for this district in many, many years, possibly decades. We know we face the unknown of state management um, and what that will bring, and we discuss that um, often. But what is the most critical thing for us and what I'm very proud of is how this team comes in each and every day with the focus of making sure we do the work and we get better. Um, and I have seen no let up in this team and we will not let up and we will continue to be a great district. We have had a complete restructuring of our central office cabinet. Um, and this is not something we had to face uh, while I was acting to bring in an outside organization, the Council of Great City Schools, to help us align better with large urban districts that are successful across America. So we are not just doing this on what we think. We are making ourselves mirror and look like very successful districts. So that was a big challenge for us, is complete restructure in the midst of acting superintendent and all we were facing. Um, I believe, in short order, we will have one of the top teams in the United States um, for an urban district. We've already brought on Dr. Devon Horton, Chief of Schools from East St. Louis Public Schools, was also a principal in Chicago, incredibly talented. Dr. Kermit Belcher, Chief Information Officer from Mason County. Um, we have several other hires remaining, Chief of Staff, Chief of HR, and General Counsel that we're in the process of working through. But without a team, without a doubt, we are going to have a top-notch team of chiefs and assistant superintendents who are gonna do this work and move us forward. Um, I said before where we've been, where we currently are. We looked at our map data from this year. We implemented map. We still have achievement gaps and disproportionality that is unacceptable. I won't hide behind that and I will continue to say that each and every day until we eliminate those. But we've developed our backpack of skills continuum around deeper learning, and we now have a system to track kids throughout the year and provide what they need to be successful. We're restructuring our schools and how they're aligned to have better uh, systemic work, support, and oversight. So when our, uh, everyone comes back to school, we will be in this new system with high school, middle school, elementary school um, that will provide us that cohesion that we need. 
I believe we have one of the most innovative racial equity policies of any district in the United States, and that is the way this process should have worked, which was a very organic process led by the community to talk about the issues we have, look at the data, talk about oversight. I have said I am putting my evaluation on the line that when we stand in front of you and report our improvement, um, my, job should, my job and my job evaluation should reflect the ability to reduce those achievement gaps. And so I'm proud of the work of that racial equity policy. It will be a foundation of what we do. Tonight you heard the action plan um, that is brand new for us that we'll be have bringing back to you in July for approval. So we just don't have a strategic plan anymore. We now have an action plan with measurables on short-term and process and long-term outcomes. It's gonna be the roadmap to get us there in 30 months. We have, a, uh, without a doubt, increased morale unity throughout the district. Um, I believe in culture. People have questioned me about school culture. The research is very clear about the importance of school culture and district culture for improvement in student achievement. Crystal clear in the research, and, and research has come out recently that we studied with our principals at a recent principal meeting. So it's very important that we continue to work on that. Commitment to deeper learning with um, higher degrees of student engagement for all students, no matter where they live, what school they go to, what teacher they have, um, it's important that all students have that. I'm proud that we've assertively collaborated with the Kentucky Department of Education around our corrective action plan, and that has been identified. Any issue that has been brought to us, we continue to be assertive about it and make sure we correct it um, and adjust accordingly so we don't have those problems again. We completed the challenging work of moving facili facilities around. That was not an easy one. To accommodate a, a new ESL uh, newcomer academy with all of our students who need those supports in one school and the exciting new W.E.B. Du Bois School, um, which uh, I believe is going to be a model across this country. I can't wait to see it in action. Academies of Louisville, the work has moved um, forward so much. That's going to be a national model uh, for academies and pathways. I'm so excited about that work. The satellite office in West Louisville um, has been a model for us, and we're going to continue to look to replicate that so that we can provide more parent engagement and opportunities for parents to engage. We've uh, had some extensive work around Louisville Promise and making sure that's moving forward to increase wraparound services for our students. And so clearly, we're still dealing with issues around culture in this district. The, d the first day I stood up here, after being named acting superintendent, I talked about the importance of culture. This is long-term work that's not going to be finished anytime soon. As I've said, we've struggled to eliminate problems around allegations with abuse and neglect, but we are going to be diligent around reporting and taking a hard stance against any staff member who has a substantiated case of abuse or neglect, as we have done throughout the year. Uh, but we will continue to better align our systems in central office to make sure that we do that, and we will work on culture and climate in every single school um, throughout this district. And so what the future holds for JCPS, most importantly, and if it wasn't for my belief in what this district will be, and my passion for that, it would be difficult to do this every day, I said that. Um, I've talked a lot recently about the 60 minutes moment, and I know it's a tagline, but I love it. Um, it motivates, but I think only 60-minute moments come out of tough times. When you look back and say, look at where we've come from where we were. And so right now we are there in those tough times, but this is what is going to lead us to our 60 minutes moment about the movement we've taken in this district, where we're going, and what we're going to do. And so I know my staff is tired of hearing about 60 minutes moment but we're gonna keep doing it, we're gonna keep talking about it until we get there. And so how we're gonna get there, we're gonna know where each and every student is on the transition continuum and provide each and every student with what they need to be successful. So this is gonna include an aggressive approach to providing engaging summer opportunities and enhanced learning opportunities for thousands of students in this district. So I don't wanna make uh, any mistake about it. 12 months from right now, we expect thousands of our students who need additional support to be in our community, not necessarily just in a classroom, our community in this entire 
uh, County needs to be the classroom for our students and work to engage students and provide improved um, literacy and numeracy for our students who need that. 12 months from now, we expect thousands of them to be in this extended learning. We've launched our backpack of skills, and in August, every single student is going to have a digital portfolio or backpack. And that's going to include data with an intense focus on literacy and math. We are going to ensure that every student is where they need to be and continue to be um, resilient about providing what they need to get there from the school to the entire community. And then our other graduation profiles, a prepared and resilient learner, an emerging innovator, a productive collaborator, and our globally and culturally competent citizen. And each and every student is gonna to contribute to that backpack on a regular basis. And then the, just, uh, we're so passionate about this that every fifth, eighth, and 12th grader at this time next year will be defending their transition readiness with actual evidence from their backpack. And so I look at what I'm doing right now as a defense of my readiness to be superintendent, so I believe I'm modeling um, what we expect our students to do at the end of this time next year. We will have an ongoing commitment to implementing the racial equity policy to reduce disparities. That work is taking place right now, and it will continue to do that. We're gonna have a true commitment to examining our student assignment plan. We must have a true understanding of the voice of this community, this entire community around student assignment. We are gonna work diligently to design a plan that meets the needs of our school district, most importantly, our students and this community. We're gonna have improved human resources capacity with a commitment to diversifying our workforce to reflect our student population. Very important, we will be bringing to you at the end of July a three to five year facility plan that will modernize our infrastructure and build new schools in every corner of this district. We have to be committed to doing this in this district. We have to have reimagined alternative schools. We haven't done that, but we have to have that where we better support our most at-risk students. Ongoing daily commitment in all of our employees to doing what's best for the safety and well-being of our students. We will not rest until we get there. A continued better and enhanced development of our school leaders around the capacities that we want for each and every one of them. We wanna define a backpack of skills for our teachers and our workforce. What do we expect every teacher and employee in this district to have? A commitment to attracting and retaining our best teachers and leaders to our neediest schools. We are committed to doing that and we will do that. And finally, an office of school turnaround that we've developed that works collaboratively with KDE to support and initiate measures to greatly reduce and I believe even eliminate the JCPS schools in the bottom 5% schools in the state. This has been modeled after other large urban districts that have been successful, and we will see a great impact in this in collaboration with the KDE. This is going from one employee working with priority schools to an entire office of support to make sure we move our schools out of the bottom 5% in the state. So we have this and many other things that we're working on right now. But clearly, we have a lot of work to do. There is no doubt about it. I'm 100% committed to making each and every one of those a reality. There are many more things that weren't even mentioned here. But in three years, we plan on having a district that reflects exactly what I just said for the future of JCPS. Dr. Coleman and I were talking today about how some people are questioning whether we can get that done or not. And I think she said it best when she looked at me and said, we've staked our careers on this. And I believe that, but that's how important this is. And so some people have asked whether we should do things that we should, like with the backpack and the continue, should we move so quickly? Or sh sh maybe we should launch something, uh, or we can't do it for every single student. And are we ready for it? Can we do it? Can we support it district wide? Why don't we just do it with a few pilot schools and see if it's successful? or and wait and see what happens there. But that time is not where we are right now. We don't have time to do that. This must be for every single stu uh, student in this district, and it is a moral imperative for us. And as I finish tonight, I use quotes a lot, and one of my favorites, I used it with our principals at the beginning of the year, um, but I'd like to quote uh, John F. Kennedy on September 12th, 1962 in Houston, Texas. President Kennedy had just come off 
a difficult year where um, the Russian Soviet Union had made it to space first. Um, the Bay of Pigs had occurred the prior year before it. Um, and he stepped up to give a speech. And he wanted to ensure the country that great things were about to happen. And here's what he said. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. And unfortunately, in his lifetime, they didn't make it, but we did make it to the moon, and we will make it to the moon. Thank you.